Good afternoon. What we're looking at today is the idea of kinematics, which is basically the mathematics of movement. And obviously when things move, they have a speed. And when they have a speed, they have an acceleration. So what, I'm gonna, what I want to do is, first of all, let's start with some ground rules for how kinematics is expressed and how it is worded. So I have a point, which we'll call O, it's the origin. And along that, I have a line. And I, I might have, okay, well, I've got one, two, three. And I've also got So I've got positive and negative numbers. So this is basically, it's basically a number line. However, what we might want to talk about is if I have a, a particle, like an, an, like, like an atom, and that atom is moving around. And what this number line represents is its distance from that center point or that origin point, the fixed point. So if the particle goes this way and it stops here, well, then it is three units from o, the origin. If it takes off in the other direction and goes here, well, it is minus one from the origin. And if I'm talking about it in terms of, you know, units of measurement, you know, if the problem that you're modeling with this kinematics um, situation is in meters, well, how far away is the particle from where it started? Well, that would be three meters. If it was here, well, it would be one meter to the left. All right. So if you're positive, if you are positive, then you are three meters to the right. And this, so, th and then this is to the left. So if you have a negative number, so this is position. So if you are, ne if you have a negative position, then you are to the left of the origin, and if you are positive, then you are to the right of the origin. All right, so. Let's talk about this function here. In, in the scenario that I've got here, X is a function of T. X is the position, T is the time, All right? So T is in seconds. The position is X meters. So you would say, well, x of t equals 5t squared, where it's between 0 and 3. So when t, when t is 1, what's the answer? It's 5. So x is 5. So after one second, x is five. At two seconds, So two seconds, yep, that's 20. 
I'm going to give I'm going to give you some context in a moment that might change how you word that last little bit of your sentence there. And then T equals three seconds. What's the answer that I've got there? What, how many meters am I dealing with? Yep. Yep. So, here is where it gets a little bit wibbly wobbly. What I'm going to say is that the situation that this is modeling, this is, this is modeling a situation. You are standing on top of a cliff, got the ocean all the way down there. And what you're, what you're doing is you are dropping stone. You are dropping a stone and the cliff is 45 meters. So you're 45, you're 45 meters up. You're dropping a stone into the ocean. And what this is, what this function is doing is it is modeling how far the stone is away from you at any point, at any time. So, XT is modeling the rocks from you going down. Right, so in this situation, X of T models the rock's distance from you going down. It models the rock's position. So if I was, if so we were to use this, so at, at one second, it's five meters. Then you've got 20 and then you've got into the water. So what's happening to that part, what's happening to that rock as it's falling? Because if what you'll notice is at zero seconds, it's zero, so it's zero, zero. After one second, it's five. It all depends on how you word the question. If I say, that X of T is modeling the rock's distance, the distance from you going down, then a positive number would mean it's going down. All right. It is a very, very specific worded quirk of these questions in that the direction of the rock moving or the direction of the particle depends entirely on how the question is worded. So in this case, even though the rock is falling, it is the direction that we care about. So it is still going to be positive. And in, thank you, Amir, it is indeed accelerating. So we go from zero, zero to one, five, to 20, to three, 45. All right. So the rock falls. How fast is that rock going?
Very good, Amir. I see you've been reading. So what's going to happen is <laughs> that too. So this is this is a little bit of intersection between what methods needs and what's done in spec. So when so if I have so it is position x at five t squared. And the, the cool thing is, is that I can get the speed of the rock by taking the differential, if I, by taking the differential of the position. So if I do dx dt, and I take the differential of that, I can get the speed of that rock at that time. Because what is speed? Speed is the amount of change in distance compared to time. It's a rate of change. All right, so we spend all this time talking about average speed. Well, using calculus, you can now find out the speed at exactly that moment by finding the exact rate of change of that position by using calculus. So in this case here, if I take the differential of this, what do I have? What is dx dt? If I take the differential of my equation x up above, it is indeed 10t. So in this case here, when the rock hits the ground, how fast is it going? All right, so this is X meters in T seconds. So it is actually going when X is three, or so when T is three, DX DT, which is the speed, is actually 30. And because we're using meters and seconds, it is 30 meters per second. So that rock is going pretty darn fast when it hits the water. So you've got position, you've got speed. What's the third thing that connects all of these things? All right, there's a third thing, ex exactly, acceleration. So we can talk about a position. We can talk about how the position changes. We can talk about how fast it's changing. But there's one more thing that we can do. We can talk about how much the speed of that car or the speed of that rock is changing over time. And this is the cool thing. You've heard of differentials. What about a double differential? So what we're going to do is... We have this equation, which describes the speed. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the differential of the speed. What's another word for speed, ladies and gentlemen? This might be the one that you are used to using. Thank you. The velocity. All right. Speed and velocity as far as I'm concerned, they're interchangeable. All right, some people might get a little picky, some people might get a little bit finicky. So what you'll sometimes see is represented by V. So what we would say is, so we've got the position, which is X meters at T seconds. We have the speed, which is the differential of that. Now, the rate of change of speed is the acceleration. Which is dx d, d squared dt.
So it's the double differential. It is the double differential. If I take the differential of this, what is it? It's just 10. So my, my question to you is, is, does that number sound familiar to you? Who does physics? Yeah. It's an approximation of gravity. So, this is meters second. This is meters per second. This is meters per second per second, which we sometimes abbreviate to ms squared. So what this is telling me is that that rock is accelerating at the speed of 10 meters per second every second, which makes sense because if we look at the speed on the previous question, at one, at one second it's going 10 meters per second, at two seconds it's going 20, and at three seconds, it's going 30. So it's a consistent speed. Does that mean I dropped the rock or threw the rock? I dropped it. All right? Because I'm only, because it's accelerating it. So the actual gravity number is 9.8 meters per second per second. But these days we just round it to 10 because we're only estimating it. We're not doing actual calculations and things like that with it. Um, it personally bugs me that they make you round it to 9.8. It's like saying pi is three. It's not. <laughs> pi is 3.14 and gravity is 9.8. Don't at me, bro. <laughs> So what this can be used for is if we are talking about the movement of things, we can use our knowledge of calculus. If we know the position of something and how the position changes, we can find the speed. And if we can find the speed, we can find the acceleration. And the cool thing is, is that we can work backwards from that. If we know the acceleration of an object, we can go back and find the speed, and then we can go one step further and find the position using only a calculus, using a knowledge of calculus. That's all, it, that's all it is. So what I want to do is go through a couple of practice questions, and then I'm going to send you on your way. And then I'm going to record the other half of this video involving anti-differentiation. A particle moves in a straight line so that its position x at time at relative to zero at time t seconds. So relative to zero means relative to the origin. It moves in a straight line. Find its initial position. Well, when t equals zero, and I put it into the equation, what do I get? I get 11. Therefore, how would you translate that into a statement? Because it's a question like that. Initial position. is 11 meters to the right of O at T equals 
three. Well, when t equals three, x e equals, uh, that's uh, nine minus 36 plus 11. So that x equals minus 16. So that's going to be 16 meters of oh, centimeters. Remember, we've got the question states our units. Five. Are you sure? Nine plus 11 is 20. 20 minus 36 is minus 16. So that's 16 centimeters to the left of O. At all times, X represents the distance from O. At all times. All right, it hasn't moved 16 to the left. It has moved to 16 from the left. Now I'm going to add on, I'm going to add some extra things to this question. How fast is it going? when t equals five. So how fast this is a speed question, all right? So whenever you're doing anything involving speed, you need to find the position formula and take the differential of it. So let's take the differential of that. Ladies and gentlemen, Can I please get the differential of my equation here? So what is dx dt? It is indeed 2t minus 12. So, so dx dt is equal to 2t minus 12. When t equals 5, dx dt is equal to what? It's equal to minus 2. Thank you, Ciel. Can speed be negative? Yeah. So in this case here, remember what we're talking about is the change of position relative to T. So the units that go with this here is what's what units are X in? Well, X was in centimeters and what units was T in? Well, it was in centimeters. So it's centimeters per second. If something is moving, if something is moving a negative amount relative to X, then it is moving to the left. So in this case here, in this case here, it is moving to the left 
at two centimeters per second. My question to you now is, is that speed constant? Is it moving at a constant speed? Is it moving at a constant speed or is it accelerating or decelerating? All right. Because the speed, so how fast is it how fast is it accelerating at t equals zero well then we take so we have to do the differential of dx dt so that is so we have to take the differential of 2t minus 12 what's that so if i do d dt bracket 2t minus 12 well that answer is just 2 so the acceleration or the double differential is just two. Does the acceleration care about whether it's moving up or down? All right. Does the acceleration tell you anything about the direction of movement? No. Why not? There's no T, all right? So in this case, is the particle accelerate? So does it actually matter? Does it actually matter about what's going on in this situation here? Do I actually need to know how does the, does its acceleration change at any point? No, there's no T. It is constantly accelerating at two centimeters per second. So that means its speed is always going to be changing. Sometimes it's going to be faster. Sometimes it's going to be slower. Sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's going to accelerate at all but it will keep constantly keep changing. So. I said I don't care. I, I think velocity and speed are interchangeable, but it turns out they're not. I lied, sorry. <laughs> velocity cares about the position. It can be moving left or right. If the velocity 
is positive, negative, or zero. So, so if it is positive, it is moving to the right, or it is moving... Again, it depends on how the problem is defined. If, if the problem is talking about it moving away from you, then velocity po being positive is it is moving away from you in the direction that it's said. Speed does not take into account the direction. So velocity, the direction matters, but the speed Direction. So you have to make sure that when you're giving speed and you're giving velocity that you're giving the right things. So. One more example, and then I'm going to send you some, and then time for you to go on your way. Position of a body moving in a straight line, x centimeters from the origin at time t seconds is given by that cubic. Find the rate of change of position with respect to time at t equals three. The rate of change of position with respect to time. Position x, respect to time, rate of change, that weird D symbol with respect to, so what am I going to have to do? I've got DX DT. Am I talking about velocity or am I talking about speed or am I talking about something completely different? So, what is dx dt? It's up there. So I'm going to take I'm going to take the differential of what's there. Thank you. It is going to be t squared minus 12. So when t equals 3, that's going to be 9 minus 12, which is minus 3 centimeters per second. So minus 3 centimeters per second, what does that mean in the context? Which direction is it moving? Yeah, it is moving to the left. Now, the other question, find the time at which the velocity is zero. Well, this is our velocity equation. V equals dx dt. Well, when, so zero equals t squared minus 12. Solve. Twelve equals two t, and then I'm going to take the positive and the negative square root of twelve, and get t. I 
I have two answers, one of which doesn't make se- which one of which doesn't make sense. Why? Look at the original question. Time cannot be negative. So the answer is t equals positive root 12, which is 2 root 3, which is about 3.5 seconds. Because root 3 is equal to 1.73. Da, 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 da. Surgeon whose life is going great until her breast... So this is bringing in a lot of the stuff that we have already done previously. All right, so what I want you to do is we are looking at 18F There's a few questions there that, that are worth doing. Um, but I'm mostly focused on... So I've done questions one and question three. So Q1 and Q3 I did. I'd like you to do two, four, five, and six. And then question 11. and 13. Yes. If you don't, I'll be very surprised. <laughs> 